afternoon folks it's Miss Shepherd here I'm doing your lesson this way just for a change rather than trying to actually speak to you whilst on Google Classrooms I am going to be there on Google Classrooms if you need any of my help but here we go I'm going to do it this way and you can access the information via Google or you can actually access it via Go for Schools so before the holidays I asked you uh, to continue with your art analysis to be focusing on preferably three artists and looking at their work in general and for some that might be tricky for some that might be very easy I mean I've had in the past when people have done exams they've actually looked at about four artists and it's a little bit easier because people are looking at the artist's work in general rather than looking at a specific piece of work okay on its own and then elaborating on it people have actually spent their time trying to focus on what common themes are working um, through their pieces of art and there are so many um, different artists out there that we've been looking at and the, the pure examples of that so when we think about the artists that we have got um, we've got um, Camilla there is a, a recurring theme in her personal work same with Audrey Flack and all of these different artists so when we look at them um, you'll notice with her work in these four pieces you've got those person's items and they're laid out in a certain way even in her more advertising pieces work they are laid out in a certain way. They're quite formulaic. Um, they're also quite dark and they're quite earthy in their tones. They're, they're sort of almost neutral, not neutral, but yeah, something like neutral. Um, and when we were looking at also Audrey Flack briefly, um, I did bring up the fact that how she uses iconic women throughout history and discusses them in her artwork and she pays homage to them almost and she sort of uses symbols in um, her work to represent them, her feelings around them, her thoughts, her theories and we also have Jim Dine who we've already looked at who uses like tools, things that are very personal to him and his childhood and so you can see when you talk about people's work in general, there are some commonalities, um, some similar sort of themes running through their work, which you can discuss and describe, though there is nothing to stop you from doing an additional piece or something more in detail where you're focusing on one piece for, as an example, uh, where you can actually describe it to show that you really understand the common theme and you can relate it back to the other work and you can do that I know I use it at key stage three uh, let's see it's here um, just bear with me if I open it up full everything goes really glary and bright so I'm trying to do it this way and it doesn't it's, it's a little bit ugh. I'll try and focus it but it doesn't seem to want to work so and the screen goes wibbly wobbly ha ha right so here is like an example if you can sort of read it I can't um where you sort of can have a chosen image in the middle and then you can start doing a visual description going all the way around it if you want to and you could do that as an add-on to your pieces work so you could have you know what your first reaction with or what you actually can see in there you know what's in the foreground midground and you can start discussing that and then you could sort of bring up your ideas about maybe what some of these images mean to you like we did with Jim Dime when we we're looking at the hearts when we we're looking at the school you know what do they represent you know what sort of common meaning do they have um, when we're also describing, don't forget to use the art vocabulary, right? It's really, really important. Okay, this just looks really ridiculously blurry. Um, oh, I don't want to start this again either, and this is wibbling. So language is really, really important when you're doing your analysis and if I'm seeing words like nice, pretty, lovely, dull, boring, basic, interesting, it doesn't show that you've actually really thought about it. You just took a glance or oh, I can't be bothered with this. Don't. You will lose out in the end. You will lose marks. 
Yeah. So think about the theme. You know, for example, this is a different one um, and this is related to a different project. But think about different things like the atmospheres. Think about, you know, what words actually are going to really describe the work. Let's see if we go back to this sheet here. It's all funny. Um, so if we go back here, we, we can be thinking about beliefs, childhood, everyday, family, iconic, identity, macabre. All these different things are really, really useful words. I want to actually hear that you or see or read um, that you've actually thought about what's going on in the artist's work. You know, how it's actually been painted or whether it's been photographed, whether it's been done as a print. Um, how is it actually being represented? Is the image distorted? Um, does it have an emotional um, feeling attached to it? Are the images overlaid? You know, is there a perspective or is it really flat? You know, what sort of colours have been used? You know, you've got your visual elements. What sort of colours have been used? How is it arranged? Yeah. How is that composition laid out in front of us? Yeah. So you can be thinking about that and making it more interesting to the moderator. I want to be pulled in. I want to know what I'm reading you've actually really thought about and really care about and you really want that grade. Now, just zipping back to making it a little bit easy for yourself. If you find it is very hard to describe things in detail, and I have done this with a few people, don't be afraid to just keep it this simple where you're looking at things um, on a very basic level where you're just describing everything that's in the image. I mean, this isn't totally everything, but that can actually help you. And then you might be able to expand upon it. There's nothing wrong of having a mind map with your essay. There is nothing wrong with that. It's showing your way of working, what works for you. There's nothing wrong with that. So by all means, do your essays. Really work on them, this double lesson. I really, really want you to work hard because I know with Christmas, you probably haven't managed to actually give it very much time. You've probably been exhausted. Other things have been going on. It's been Christmas and it's snowed a hell of a lot. So what I want you to do is get that done. I want you to also email me as well with what you've done. I am having to track you as it is. So whoever doesn't log on, I've got to report, right? Whoever is not doing their work again, I am going to be tracking as well. And it is really important that you are actually doing these jobs. It's not going to slide. You can't afford to slide. You've got to now treat this with the fact that we're not returning back to school straight away. And then you've got your mock exam for, for two weeks that this is going to end up being more like towards your final, maybe your only last project. That might be the only time we've got. Um, along with finishing off our cardboard thing. So really, 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 really work on this. And the next bit I'll do is towards the next thing that you can be thinking about alongside doing your written work. And that can work for your following lesson, for your following double lesson and any other lessons after that, that I'm not going to see you for potentially. Okay, goodbye. End of this one.